we can we can do all the yimps together. Uh, I'm not sure that works. No, I think let's let's start pairing some things a little bit. I think would be okay. Yeah. So uh, we have hidden passage and we have tiresome climb. Yep. Um, as you mentioned, Gabriel, you can use them both to overstack. Not typically advised, mm -hmm. unless you have a build that, for example, either can remove days or where it's so important to overstack that you need to overstack even at the cost of two days. Um, what's what are your guys' thoughts on overstack builds in general right now? I think it's I, really I good. I, I really think, yes, I, I think they're pretty good. I. I, I prefer to do a fledgling imp build if I can, but if I don't get it, I know that overstack will be solid. Um, I usually regret when I see a fledgling imp and I don't lean into it and I do the overstack build instead. But all that being said, it never feels necessarily weak for me to do an overstack build. It just kind of sucks sometimes not to be having that option to slam down imps because Welder Helper is also pretty good. Um, so I prefer the imp build if I can, but overstack is not necessarily sad for me to see. Uh, the thing with overstack is you, you want to focus then on either like something like Ritual or Dark Deal for your scaling, or alternatively just like Alpha Fiend Infusion can be really good. Um, uh, basically things that passively scale. Um, Apex M plus right. Steel Workers, things like right. that. Right, yeah, you overstack a few of them and it's game over. <laughs> I think it's especially good with prince builds. I think it's significantly less good with queen builds. Yeah, I, so I, you go I pick hidden passes much less with queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, well, for tiresome climb, you, uh, I, I would just pick this card not for overstacking, but just for the days too. And then uh, yeah. you, you can just play, uh, have hold over on it and play it every single turn against the last immunity and then you can play on top floor and then you're not taking any damage i i yep. think tiresome climb made one of the biggest positive jumps of any card in the dlc it's actually insane how good this card is now like it had two did... bumps once yeah. one one was friends and foes it had a huge jump because patient it was the only oh, patient counter in right. in hellhorned and then you're exactly right. It made the second big jump across all builds, which is divinity. Right. And it's it's the only true divinity counter in the in the entire clan. And, and even even beyond divinity, I find uh, for just the entire game, the sharded up game, shall we say, it's just insanely good. I mean, look, on the note of offense is better than defense. Also, just making the enemy not attack is better than defense. <laughs> Uh, some of those bosses, this is a godsend against, especially if you've double stacked it. Um, like stealth boss, you can burn out four stacks of stealth, or the the multi strike boss that does seven thousand damage just can't attack you anymore. Uh, even a backline unit that for if you couldn't clear like a thirty damage shade wing or something, just put it on up to your pyre, let the pyre kill it for free. It's yeah. just so versatile. <laughs> It does have a uh, scary time, which is that uh, you draw it at the wrong time, and the only time you can play it is when you're you would just kill yourself, suicide against uh, bosses. But I think that uh, you don't take it for that normally, and I think that's why it was so bad in the past because it's not really good against the other seraphs at, yeah. to the same degree, um, and it's not really that great against normal bosses. It's okay. But it's a real timing thing. Like you have yeah. to hit it at the right time, or it, it's bad, or just a dead draw. Um, but I think it's definitely yeah against the against the two huge hellhorned killers. I mean, divinity or not divinity. Um, Sarah the patient kills hellhorn builds without some type of daze or prevention because armor does nothing. It just gets shredded, and your your guy's gonna get trampled. So I think uh, in that respect, it's become almost auto pick, which is crazy to think. Yeah, you know, yeah, that I, this I, has become so good. I would say it's auto pick. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, well, I think I, it. Yeah, either you either you have this or you go going in builds. In builds, don't really yeah. worry about patient. <laughs> That's also true. So, I, but I would put it in like orange. 
like dark orange. Yeah. With just general overstack builds, I no, you know, you, you it is good. Um, hidden passages is good. The it's it's a card. No, it's it, it's because it's uh it's not just used for overstacking. It's for like you can ascend uh enemies as well, and then uh if you have artifacts like the days are artifact uh, either on the pyre or on the top floor like it, it just you can just kill some of the back lines and and sometimes you can just tank the damage from the back lines like the uh the conduit that gives uh spikes the the guy that gives multi-strike you can just ascend them and then they just to uh get some damage out um off uh, off your units and uh so it's uh pretty versatile yeah if i were to change it i would really like it to be zero cost consume i think it would be significantly better personally i think the times when you want to ascend like two units and then just never see it again is a lot more common than that you want to see it show up over and over and over and over again that's the one thing i don't like about hidden passage is it's a, another timing thing if you if it's at the back of your deck it can be really awkward you have to have units sitting on two floors for a little bit and they might die and like that part becomes a little complicated but i think it's i don't know i i think it's it sometimes it's like what makes your deck good and sometimes it's really just a dead draw and occasionally you have stuff in between Yeah, it's, uh, maybe we can put it uh, like in the f uh, front here. I still tend to think I might put important part of a combo because it really does enable the pretty powerful strategy. Yeah, and and it it's true. It it can be a dead draw definitely, but I I think it it still can be pretty useful for displacement. Like uh, I've had it save runs before. Um, it's also a similar another thing it's similar to Tiresome Climb in that it really makes the permafrost upgrade become a high tier upgrade mm. uh, that can all, so with the permafrost you know it, it basically solves the issue that you're kind of uh, discussing there Nate where you don't want to draw it again in a lot of builds and at that point it's like you get it um, even, even if you draw it out of order it, sal it solves that issue but then it's also there if you do run into that tough situation where like you probably wouldn't kill a tank if you don't move the first tank up like the shield dude or whatnot uh or even just like move um a sycophant off or something or if there's some uh shard or sorry the scourge shufflers you can uh get one less turn where they're shuffling scourges into your deck by just moving them up get them to the kill floor basically um so i feel like the floor isn't too low with it Whereas the ceiling's pretty high, um, which seems to match, I think. Like when I look at Branding Right, Alloy, and Dark Deal, they seem like just solid bread and butters, but the ceiling isn't quite what I would say matches Hidden Passage. Yeah, that's fair. So we can put it at the back of the part of a combo, important part of a combo. Yeah. It'd be Definitely yeah. wouldn't rank it. I wouldn't rank it ahead of Tiresome Climb. Yeah. Let's do then, okay. uh, we can do. Hornbreak and Torch together, I think that fits. Yeah, very similar. Um, I think Hornbreak also got a pretty big buff. Yeah, compared to previous. Definitely. Uh, targeted backline damage that pierces is just a godsend yeah. in a lot of, and not even just in Divinity Fight. It's really good against every single Seraph. Yep. Um, it can be used uh to clear your own units yep which is uh <laughs> for imps like it it's a staple of an imp build where torch now oftentimes so there's so many ways to get imps to have more than one health somehow right. that i feel like uh hornbreak is a really good enabler of imp builds yep um one of the best cards to put plus 30 onto because it's yep 70 piercing damage one of the highest piercing damages you can get without adding piercing to a thing 
and, and I, I really think, like it. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and and even on that note, even just a simple plus 10, 25 gold at a shop, that kills every uh, backliner in the game, period. You know, that's 30 yeah. damage. And all yeah. but one tank, all but one armor tank. Right. There's the, the one armor tank that has 60, and all the rest have 30 or less. So it's really I think really the, strong. Eagle, the eagle has 100, but the eagle's just... Oh, that's right. You're right, you're right. Yes, I, I hate that eagle. It's like, okay, now it's nothing kills it with Pierce. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the only thing that kill it with Pierce would kill anything with Pierce, but... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah I, think it's, I think it's really solid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's uh, just really, really good to see if uh, it comes up in the... Uh, as a card uh, in the common tier and yeah it's uh yeah you guys said um like simply plus 10 um it, like sometimes y you can even just put a plus 10 and piercing uh even though the piercing it overlaps uh you can still put a plus 10 piercing on it just for the uh magic uh just for the spell damage um just yeah, simply because you want it, it would just kill every single backline unit uh, if you have the extra ton damage. Yeah, it's a godsend against the the anything that makes it so you don't have to deal with the spike channeler being relevant on his floor is a good thing. <laughs> and uh, the and multi blight generators, all the blight yeah. generators as well, oh, die yeah. from a plus yeah. ten. Yep. So, yeah, it, so it, I would say I would put it at also. It's not really a part of a combo, right? It's just like a staple. Yeah, it 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 seems similar to Dark Deal to me in terms of overall value. It's like it will provide value almost guaranteed in a run. It's not gonna never. It's never gonna be an irrelevant uh, dead draw of a card. Even if you don't upgrade it, it's still killing the spike channelers. But generally, you'd want to upgrade it. Just even if even if you have to surge stone it, if you're unlucky and can't find the plus ten damage, like just a one time forty or 50, however much that is. I can't do the math right 50. now, but yeah, fifty. Yeah. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I mean, that'll save a run in a lot of cases. Conversely, torch got a lot worse <laughs> because nothing dies to two damage anymore. Not right. even in ring one. Right. <laughs> I, I, yeah, torch is almost. Solely reserved for killing my fledgling imps and welder helpers now, <laughs> which is still okay. There's worse commons in the game, or worse starter cards, I would say. I mean, it's still game, good against uh, Mark of Invasion. True, true. Yeah, it's it makes me more confident to take a, a Mark of Invasion. <laughs> and you know, I, you could uh, you could put spell upgrades on it, and then it's still better than like a at least it's better than a spear. Like an upgraded spear doesn't kill any frontliner but an upgraded torch kills a backliner in a lot of cases um, yeah. there's just so much spell uh shield in the late game that if you're not adding pierce to it it's like eh, it might kill something but it probably Alternatively, won't. it does it does burn through it so if you have a big spell True. and you need to True. get through spell it's really good at like for example seraphs like you just punch all the spell uh and damage shield away and Right. So I it, it's a cheap thing. I, I would say it's probably upper yellow. Yeah. I think yeah. it's better than battering ram because it can target and there's not I mean it, it it's it, it's the basic card um that con that you have to play with every single time. Uh so it, it's like, a mid tier it common card, I think. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'm not like in love here? with it, but I I don't hate it. Um, I can see arguments that it might be really good. I just I find I'm ha probably half my runs I just don't really use them that much. Um, and then half my runs they're a godsend. I mean sometimes it's like that without these torches I would not be able to play my fledgling imp every turn or something like that, and mm -hmm. or a welder helper, and it's just super good in those type of runs. It is ironically, though, I feel at its best at killing your own stuff or even triggering revenges than it is at actually yep. killing enemies. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the only thing that makes, I think, well, not only thing, but it's one of the things that can make um, Frost Channel work pretty well, is that you can torch your own oh, Soul yeah. Guard yeah, to trigger. Yeah, really, really good with that Soul Guard, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, who do we want to pair Horned Warrior with? I guess we can pair it together with. Uh, no, no, no. Normally we would the three reworked ones together. Uh, no, we can we can do them separate. We can do the other two uh, together because yeah. they kind of fit together a little bit better. But Horned Warrior, um, multi strikes really good. Yep. Not very many units start with it, and yeah. it has better base stats than a lot of the multi strike units. Yep. With no real downside. That it's like it's weird because it's like when I compare it to Animus Will, I'm like, oh, Horned Warrior is just worse. But it turns out that doesn't mean it's bad. It means it's still. And it's not good. necessarily more. It's not necessarily worse. If you put Early plus twenty five health yeah. and an extra multi strike, right? You'd have to put you know like a plus ten and the plus twenty five on an Animus, and they're pretty similar. Like it has yeah. a little bit more health. It has a lot more starting damage. Twelve starting damage is is a lot. Yeah. It does have one less multi strike, but I feel like that's not a massive downside. Right. And and it's like when you compare it to other uh banner units uh, other than Animus Will that get multi strike, they usually come with a significant downside. Like Alloy has the fuel, which is tough, um, especially early game. Yeah. Uh and even the the egg. I love I love the egg. Can host uh I yeah. can't remember the name of it. The Kin host Pupa, whatever it is. Yeah, Kin host Pupa. Oh it's uh, Pupa. Pupa. Yeah. But eight shell is, you know, that's a significant thing to chunk through to get multi strike, especially early game without the right parts. Mm -hmm. But Horn Warrior just gets multi strike. Um, yep. It's squishy, but a simple 25 health upgrade, like you said, can fix that issue or just armor. Armor. And it's, it's also one it's you're not solid. scared to put because it has such low health. If you have armor, you're not scared to put one horn's tome on it. You're not wasting a lot of this health. Right. Which exactly. is quite good. And even its essence becomes pretty good in that regard. Like you can put it into a few specific units like Rail Beater or or Apex Imp, and it, there's basically no downside. You yep. just get a multi strike. Um, and uh, even similar to like how Fledgling Imp means that Endless becomes a really good upgrade. Large Stone, I wouldn't say is really good, but it's it becomes a usable upgrade on a unit like this. Whereas Large Stone is often just a complete miss when you see it. It's nice to have a unit where it actually benefits from Large Stone decently, yeah. like as long as you got the pip space. But Horned Warrior is pretty flexible. You can use it in an imp build, but you can also use it in an overstack build, like just stack up and put Rage on it with Ritual, or even. I would say it's it's not insane, but it's not unusable with Alpha Fiend Infusion. Like I've had it work with Alpha Fiend. I mean, at the base, it's ten damage. If you get another multi strike, it's fifteen damage a turn. So there's a lot you can do with this unit. It's it's it's, it's crazy how much of a one hundred and eighty this did when they reworked it for me. Like I never picked this unit before, yep. and now now it's my third most picked Hellhorn banner. <laughs> I would put it uh, in terms of ranking. Top of kind of yellow orange. Yeah. I don't think it it's not it's not like as good as Apex Imp or Deranged Brute, but certainly better than most of the other in fact I think it's better than um every other non imp unit in the game. So I put it I here? wouldn't put it as an important part of a combo, I'd put it there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah I think yeah, I actually uh, haven't played much with this uh, unit. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I should I should uh, try it a little bit more because it's, I guess the the multi strike does uh, make it a lot better now uh, since multi strike is valued really high. Yeah. Um. Imp in a box. Let's do all the imp stuff <laughs> together. Yeah. Uh, we can do. Uh, are we doing all the imp stuff or the units or just the spells? Imp spells. Yeah. yeah we can do the spells. The four. Um. I, th I think uh, imp in a box and important work definitely have an edge on the other ones in my eyes. Uh, important work if you have an endless imp is unbeatable i think i think it's what more could you want than us uh, if you could hold over the important work and spell chain it and have an endless <laughs> imp there's just what what more do you want right yeah. <laughs> that's a game winner no matter almost no matter what imp you have i mean i guess it's true like even if you were to put a, a, a an impling onto an impling yeah. and it's doing 50 bursts 50 bursts like 
three or four times in a row is not right. bad. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's just so much value. Um, and they nerfed important work. Remember, it used to give more. Yep, used to and get I plus just, two. It was always, it's always been kind of busted, but I think it's even more busted now because the imp builds are more busted now. Like, yes, fledgling imp, transcend imp, even a welder helper. Yeah, crazy to think pre pre nerf and pre nerf of transcend imp together, yeah. you were gaining ember <laughs> oh. every time you played it, which was insane. Yep, yep. <laughs> no, I think it's good. I think it's, uh, it's, it's not you only need it and you win. But it's definitely an important part of a combo, I would yeah. put it. Yeah. Right. It's, if you have the combo, it'll win it. But obviously, just it's skippable. Like, because if you don't have an imp build, why would you want it? Right. I, I would almost say I would never, I wouldn't even use it uh, outside of Endless Imp or Imp Sickle. Um, it's, I, I mean, I might, but it, it, I think it significantly loses its value at that point because at a One certain point, best... you're dry of imps. <laughs> One of the best parts is that it's rare. So you yep. will only ever take it if you need it. So it's great. Uh, uncommon, actually. Is it uncommon? I thought it yeah. was rare. It's all uncommon. Uh, Im important work is uncommon. Which one of them is rare? Uh, uh, Imp in a box is uncommon. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got that mixed up. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess uh, that's true because I've seen it as a starter card. Duh. Yeah, I've seen it as a starter card. It's not great as a starter card unless you specifically have imps, and then because it, yeah. it, it, it could just be a dead card. You can have right, right. Palhorn Prince, no imps, and you just have a dead, yeah. which is not great. But yeah, I mean with the, I the queen, it's uh, it's always uh, you know, good. <laughs> I, right, but yeah. I guess you need probably need a imp parade at least uh, for it to yeah, do imp something. Yeah, makes it pretty nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It needs to be like I would say ninety percent of the time it needs to be playable. It's always terrible yeah. when you get it early as well, even in imp builds. Like if you get it before you have the endless imp, it kind of gets a little awkward. But right, right. Um, imp in a box. I really like it. I really, really like imp in a box. Yeah. I think it's I think it's good in any deck. Like it's very rare that an imp in a box is just not valuable at all. Yeah, the only time I'll consider skipping is if I'm hardcore just into an overstack build. At that point, it's like, it, it, it would still be takeable, honestly, then. But it's like, usually I have a better option at that point. But if I have any pip space available, if I have any imp build going, it is a top tier card for sure. Like, And not only that, if you have like a transcend imp, it, it really opens up what can happen. Like I'll often remove the consume on it or or try to purposely consume re return it with like a impish scholar or something because mm -hmm. now you start getting the opportunity to get pirate champer and that will enable your transcendent to be so easy to play yep yeah so good and then like you said you're usually just wanting a fledgling imp like I i've missed on fledgling imp before and just consume removed infinite box hell vented it and that was enough like eventually i can get my skin. eventually you'll get one yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh it's just uh, the, the the gives you two yimps and then it, and all, because all of the yimps can be just played uh with uh minor benefits uh like and uh, the two yimps can have like synergies uh with each other and then the, also you can have a chance of getting the yimp scholar uh to bring it back again and that it's like the cherry on top and i have a conspiracy theory about this they 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 nerfed it at one point to put the impish scholar and transcendent chance down mm -hmm. i feel like they shadow unnerfed that <laughs> I, I, I feel like i see them a lot more often than i was for a period there because there was, it was mm -hmm. like i had one run where it was like i had i had a ridiculous imp in a box build where i'd play like at least three or four a turn and I yeah. couldn't find transcend up at all. Mm. But now it's like, I, I, see, I feel like I see it almost every time I have imp in a box in a run, I'll see it at least once or twice. It's like, I don't know. I could, that's just maybe be being paranoid though. <laughs> I'm also a huge fan of spell chaining it because you have four and yeah. out of the four, you're pretty likely to get one pyre chomper out of there and then you right. can play everything. Right. Yeah, but... I like spell chain on it. Um. 
So I would put it also as important part of a combo. I don't think it can win runs by itself, but I think yeah. it's it's really really good. Yeah. Um. And then impressive. Implosion. Impressive is. It's okay. I think it's uh, you. You would take it if you can't find important work. Um, just because, uh, you sometimes you just you want to kill your imps, and then if you don't have any way to kill your imps, uh, that this can work. And also, if you like, uh, you can still put hold over on it, and then hold over minus one. I think this thing costs one. Uh, and. And you, you're, uh, or even like you can put uh minus one and spell chain on it, and then you can. No, you can't do that. <laughs> Never mind. You're not drawing. No, it's more. It's more. I would say it's like your. If you really don't, I mean, if you really can't get another way to kill your imps off, it's pretty good. Um. Yeah, it's a backup plan. The attune. The attune is like who cares? I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get. I guess my feelings on it are like, it's kind of like what you guys say, and it's like I would take it if I had very poor way to, um, or I just didn't have a way to sack my imps. But like, I'd almost prefer. I'd almost prefer every other just damage spell to it, because at least those, if I draw them, like a hornbreak, for example, hornbreak will sacrifice any imp just the same. True, I won't get the front loaded damage, but. I also have the flexibility to kill a backliner with it if I want to, uh, especially yeah. if I didn't draw an imp that turn or whatever. Um, I feel like impressive is good on paper, but in practice, I just rarely find it that good. It's like it it could do front loaded dam uh, front big front loaded damage if you needed it. I just find I don't need that in Hellhorned much. Like I so really much like damage, it, right? I really like it in in parade three builds. Mm, That's where yeah, I really yeah. like it because then yeah. you frontline with your fledgling imp, you can then okay. kill off your um welder helper that you're getting. That's where I really like it. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I mean I agree with that. I think what where it can be good, so if you have in parade, and especially if you have in parade three, then you get the plus ten in piercing, and that's a hundred piercing, which is like on a different scale. But like Outside of that, I kind of agree. I think it's very niche. Yeah. Yeah, I I I guess it's like uh you need some way to kill off your um if if you're running like Welder Helper uh and also with the uh, Welder Helper um the unit uh buff yeah uh, that gives a uh, ten armor to everybody. Uh, you need a way to kill your uh, about the harbor to, to play it again um that you and and of course you're not uh, offered the important work it i think it's more just a backup for it and then uh also like the as you guys said the frontline 50 or 100 damage it's not that much damage I would yeah, put it in niche. So, yellow. Yeah. It's like, yeah, similar to Inflame in terms of typical value I find from it, I feel. <laughs> not, a, not an ideal card. Implosion. Impolate. Oh, or Impolate. Impolate, sorry. Impolate. Impolate. <laughs> it's 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 actually like if you're running on the queen, uh, the Shard Tail Queen, it's. Uh, it, it, it uh, scales off your uh, imp parade, right? Impsicle as well, and imp in a box, and imp in a box. <laughs> yeah, which um, should be good. I actually I really like it. With, it. I never need it. <laughs> I like it. I like it with permafrost as a cleanup. Yeah, yeah, that's how I use it. Yeah, I, I, uh, there are there were some uh, daily challenges that had this, and then you just. Do you play a bunch and then you have hold over and you just play every play like Damn a it. bunch, uh, a five or six or seven of them every single turn and yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's oh, tough. Uh, do you have your? Uh, can you do a viewer on uh, um, Impolate? 
There it is. Yeah. It it's weird because like it is a good card. I just rarely find myself adding it these days. Um, I added it more prior to the DLC. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like I needed that extra hit a lot more, but. I don't know, just with the, the craziness of... It's like you, you would add it in an imp build, right? If I have an imp build, I just rarely find I need an extra bit of damage to the frontliner. And and even that damage isn't isn't what I need, right? It's th That's killing a tank. It might kill a wilt wing. Um, that's not what's threatening my floor. What's threatening my floor is a shade wing in the back or a sp sharp spike channeler in the back. So it's like... I feel like these front-loaded damage cards are rarely what I want in Hellhorn. Because yeah. my super raged-up dudes aren't going to have a problem killing a tank, right? But maybe they do. Maybe if it's a weird just deck where I've, I'm relying on Inflames and I have Queen Zimplings, then I take an Impolite, sure. Yeah, um, yeah you speed good because uh, the... Heavy units, they don't, they're not sharded up. Uh, but now, now even with the front load damage, it's you're not really killing a tank. Uh, right. It, you you need you need a you need bunch a of, of you need a lot of imps. <laughs> and yeah. then I I I think, oh uh, yeah, okay, never mind. And uh, and it's. It, and it also has the same problem as all the others, which is that uh, it doesn't pierce shield. by natural, so spell shield right. just like completely yeah yeah so it. much spell shield in that yeah but but, uh, but the good thing is that like it, it, even if you play your imps uh the, like your imps still count as being in your deck right any any imp that you play it's still count yeah. as being in your deck <laughs> right <laughs> um there is one exception to this by the way. Uh, specifically, um, the what is it? The permadeath from the mutator oh. will remove it. That's the only case. Permadeath from the upgrade does not remove the imp, but permadeath from the mutator does remove the imp, and it doesn't count towards your spell count. From the mutator and so, also the Malika the event? <laughs> no, the event doesn't because you can reform the imp from the event. So you can, if you have, if you have the uh, stone that makes it, uh, whatever, get plus, yeah, en or not endless. If you have the stone that makes it uh, get extra or become zero cost and then also um, oh. purge, it will or have it, it will be able to be reformed it will stay in your deck until the end of that round and then it's gone the monster rail spike yes the rail spike but if it's from the mutator you can't be reformed it's gone and then it removes it from the spell damage very specific <laughs> but uh Okay. <laughs> yeah. Case, for those of you, for those of you that really just love that permadeath mutator, <laughs> be aware it will reduce the spell damage of your impolite. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think we can put it in also niche. I don't yeah. think it's. I think it's around the same. Uh, rapid fire all the imps. <laughs> yeah, let's do Impus it. scholar. Impus scholar. Um. I think Molting Imp is the only one I typically skip, even though it's okay. The other ones I find are all pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, Impus, or uh, yeah, Molting Imp I would put under Niche. It's okay. Its essence is pretty good yeah, to, to, put with, good. to put with other uh, Imps. Right. It's also really good to get that essence so that you can then later trigger it with um, Transcend Imp. Right. Yeah, I think it's um, it, it, it it's uh similar to uh the uh the the explosive versus the uh the, the other one that deals fifteen damage to all from uh Mountain Remnant. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the Devour of it, Death. The, the, yeah, yeah, Devour it, of Deaths. Yeah, the basically the same comparing yeah. like Quincy and But it's and, it's actually not the same in practice. Uh, molting imps <laughs> molting imps is better. Yeah. Um, because it happens before anything else happens. Right. I think in most cases you want it to happen at the beginning, not at the end. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah. Uh, and it happens without any other trigger. You don't need it to die. It can it can live, and you still get the triggering effect. Right. Um. Then if we go to Impish Scholar, I would say Impish Scholar is okay, except that it enables infinites. And it's very important that it can enable infinites. So, um, but I would still put it at the upper end of this is good in my deck. I don't yeah. think you build around infinites most of the time. They're more for fun and for daily challenges. They're not really, or maybe tournaments, but uh, normally I would say you don't do it for that. It's a really good enabler for transcendent builds, though, because once you have the one transcend, or once you have the one impish scholar, then you just constantly get back uh, consume cards as well, which is really really strong. Yeah, there's it, it's it's a swingy card. Um, I'm often skipping it, but there are some even even like if you have it on endless and you can control your consume pool, you know it can be game winning. Uh, Last stand is good example of one mm -hmm. um one harm tome can be an example of another one those would be or, the main ones i would say within hellhorn but there's also the other clans yeah it's the outside i think it's where you get a lot of the value right right but uh you know i wouldn't say i it has that ceiling but i'm often skipping this card i think i like where where you've kind of placed it there it's like it's hard to really fit it anywhere because it's like if it makes sense it will probably win you the game if it doesn't make sense, it's probably not worth putting in a deck, right? Like I don't the know. hardest part is that the best cards you want to pair with it are typically rares. Rare consumed right. cards are where it's at, right. and then you're taking the scholar for the potential to get a consuming rare card, and then it's hard. It's it's a bet for the future. Yeah. There are a handful of uncommons. Like if you get imp in a box, take an imp a scholar. Like yeah. you just yeah, don't even think about it. You just do it. <laughs> but if you if you have if you have other ones. Or if you're specifically playing Wormkin, you take it every time. Like those are the cases where you just you auto pick it. Right. But outside of that, I think it's your hedging for the future. And ideally, you just I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's 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 good, but it's not it's not yeah it's not going to be one that you're going to take in the majority of builds. Right. Yeah, I think the the Impish Scholar and the Power Chomper, they're of uh, like similar, um, like in the uh, where when you would pick it, pick them because uh, like they they have their own like combo that yeah. you, that you can do, and of course if you have a transcendent, it's always good, but uh, like normally uh, um, in most runs uh, they're a little bit uh, harder to play because it's, uh, for power chomper it's it, you might not you might draw it and then you might not need the extra ember that turn and then as you guys said the uh, impish scholar is just uh do i do i have the, like that those uh, consume those good consume cards that i want to bring back from the from my consume pile like it uh yeah you're just hedging on the future <laughs> or or if you have a good one uh if you picked a good consume card already then yeah you can just pick it up um and then and then three more okay. queen simpling this niche it's good but it's not great yeah, uh, I... a lot, all of these, <laughs> the their its essence is good. Their, all of these, their essence are are good, but yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I think I tend to rate Queen's Impling higher than as far as a uh, what do you call them starter card than most. Um, I think the the first the the big thing I think that is it is worth valuing it uh i think still it would probably fit into the niche tier but like the fact that it can basically win you the run with transcendent i th i think when we think of rare non-banner cards they come up more often than we than in comparison to a rare banner mm -hmm. like transcendent might be rare but it doesn't actually show up that infrequently right mm -hmm. like it's any any individual rare there's only eight of these in each clan and 
you're guaranteed at least two uh, rare drafts on those bosses. Um, yep. Granted, they share from both clans' pools, but even even just that alone, it is not an insignificant uh, amount of time that you don't find transcendent. Right, transcendent. You might not find it in fifty percent of your runs, but even if you're finding it in thirty-five or forty percent of your runs, the fact that it basically wins you the run is worth adding. Like to me, that makes the cards pretty valuable. <laughs> um, yeah. It, the thing is, like, I think the impish or the queen's impling, in that respect, it doesn't win the run because of the queen's impling. It wins the run because its essence is so much better. The forty damage right. is right. good. The ten damage is not even with transcendent is not great. Right. You have to play like. I, I'm trying to think like before you can kill tanks, you have to play at least like a know. dozen of them. <laughs> you just don't have that many. So right. I, right. I, so if I, excluding essences, I think its essence is a lot better than it is as a unit. Right. It's certainly one of the better common cards. It's like top three common cards because it does everything you want. It has a huge immediate effect. It right. can be oh. offensive and offensive. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. very versatile and it goes away once you've played it. Right. Right. And it has that imp synergy too. Yes. Um, a lot yes. of these cards that do nothing. Like like I remember prior to the exile update. I really hated imps in Hellhorned. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, exactly right. Yeah, like those imp synergy cards, I would see them in my opener and I would just be so angry. I'm like, okay, I have impressive and no imps. Like, and, and imps, I don't know, like, fledgling imp back then was only three rage, which was okay, but you can't infuse it on itself. And there, w- there wasn't quite as much stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's okay. a, one of the better, better starter cards, too. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. that common, uh, and then we can move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I think Welder Helper I put in orange. I think it's uh, one of the better imps. It's certainly one you can just take whenever. Like you don't need you don't need any synergy at all, and it's just still pretty good. Twenty armor and uh, you know, I'm okay. The one health it has is not great, but uh, twenty armor is pretty good. Maybe we can put it here because I I think that uh, like you still need uh, like the space to play it though. Like sometimes you might uh, you have to consider that uh, you have to think about at least uh, like if you have the space to play or not, and then uh, and then and then play it. Um, and also you need like some ways to kill it. But I mean, you could say the same thing about Fledgling to a certain extent. The one thing yeah. that Fledgling has over Welder is that Fledgling can frontline. When Welder Helper, you don't really want to frontline. You want it to get its benefit to a unit and then die. But I'm okay with that. I think it's... I, I would still pick it over Scholar. I would pick it over... Somehow Pyre Chomper got in there. We didn't talk about it yet. But anyway, um, I think it's... I, I would put it at the back of that pack. It's right on the edge. It's not... Yeah, it's uh No, I don't know though. Does it does it enable any particular combos? It's uh, really good with a lot of stuff, d- but it's d- like just you know, Apex Yen uh That's it. <laughs> it's really good with Shardtail Queen. Like yeah, just in general impre- it, with uh Oh maybe put it at the front of the next tier down. I it, I, I can't put it in the same tier as like deranged brute and apex imp. Yeah, and it's weird. I find myself pre DLC taking it more. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think it. it, it I I wouldn't say it lost value. It's just that everything else moved ahead of it. Uh, like defense is just less else. less critical, and right. defense in the form of armor and health is less critical than right. uh, than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, all the uh, offensive cards that are buff, they they are better, and then it's just better to kill the enemy than to defend against the enemy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's t- yeah, and especially like late game, a few leaks is game over. Like if you x if you let one wave through at any significant amount of health, it's usually GG. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, last but not least. Chomper. No, oh, we, oh, we oh. missed Pyre Chomper okay. somehow in the middle <laughs> yeah. of all this. Um, Pyre Chomper is similar to Scholar, Impish Scholar, yeah. where it enables certain things. I think it's less consistent than Impish Scholar, uh, but 
I would kind of keep it in the same vein. Yeah. It doesn't just pure garbage though. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't. All the others, I've never, it, I've it, never used this essence. <laughs> yeah, they're like I have. So, when I think that it's essence is it's a summon, and then it's not, and then you feel really depressed. Yeah, but <laughs> so uh, so sometimes like you just unless you have a transcendent uh, like uh, if you can't draw it uh in the correct turn, uh, sometimes you just draw it and then and then you don't uh. You, you don't really need the extra amber, um, and and it's a shuff, so you're just drawing a, a basically a deck card, and then you ha it's you have to either play it or just shuffle it back into the deck. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's one of the best ones to get out of the imp generating things. I think it's one of the less ones you want in your deck. S side note: I think if they made it a common, then demon fiend might be a little more. Feel goody, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what you would take out because I feel like everything in the common tier feels properly in the common tier. It's not like some of the other clans where a lot of commons could probably be uncommon or whatnot. But yeah, or I mean, I still think its essence should be what it is. I don't understand yeah. why yeah. it's not because then you could do some stuff. You could put it onto another unit and then use it to a new little unit. Putting it on Demon Fiend is bad as an essence. Yeah. Like even though it does reduce its cost, it's still not good. Right. Turns out a zero cost Demon Fiend late game isn't good enough. <laughs> no. Um. And then uh, yeah. Then the then the 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 daddy of them all. Yeah. Um, Transcendent, which is just still needs a nerf probably. <laughs> I don't even know how you nerf it at this point. I think it's just a. Uh... You could maybe three cost it. I think even that, a three that, cost that... it would be pretty broken. <laughs> The I mean, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be like the the same as the lodestone. <laughs> yeah, but lodestone can't uh, replenish its uh, ember cost <laughs> naturally. Um, how do you make transcendent in line? Maybe you don't. Maybe it just always has to be the staple. I don't know. It, you make it, it a banner unit. What if you made it a banner unit? A rare banner. It would show up less. I mean, that would be a nerf the clan i do think it i mean personally it's, it's I, I really bad to open your hand with it's really bad as a as your first card you play right for right. the most part unless you have the endless and then the self-infusion at that point yeah you're good. but i think that's to me that's the broken aspect of transcendent it was a little more like it was obviously still a very good card prior to the dlc but i felt like it was more skippable now it's mm -hmm. like i if i have any imps if i have a queen's imp I'll just it, it, the fact that it it its own infusion, its own essence or whatever, triggers on itself. And not only does it trigger on itself, it from the very first play triggers twice. <laughs> like that could be maybe the first thing they nerf is like it probably shouldn't trigger twice from the get go, <laughs> and every time after that, on top right. of what's already been triggered. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and like I, I find myself just picking, um, uh, picking up f like fledgling yams or like uh the sometimes the water hopper uh, in the beginning just in the hopes of getting a transcendent mountain three. Yeah. <laughs> just that there, there's a chance that you get it. Uh, it's like well, I I I'll just pick up some yams and mm -hmm. then. Like if I'm not, uh, if I don't find a endless uh in the first two rings, it's fine. I I might have the chance to get the transcendent, and then I can just find more uh and un endless uh in at a later ring that it's just uh it'll work out somehow. Uh, it just uh th that you're always just picking the imps uh, because of this card is just. I mean, <laughs> that's not including all of the weird, stupid stuff like architect and can host and like weird yeah. crap you can do with it that are even Pause. beyond. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all of you know. um, so I, it's a uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 too good. I don't know how I don't know how you nerf it necessarily, because like even Ember cost, it's just like you'll find a way. It's yeah. not that prohibitive. Um. 
it, it would be too complicated to nerf it the way I would want it, which would be that it basically can't re it. It, it would to me like if I if I put Queen Zimpling into it, uh, it would be it's imbalanced that it just gets its own. Summon. That it's it its text happening. happens. It's its text happens after the summon right. rather than before it. Right. So it's like you get your initial forty, then the summon happens, and you get eighty. So now the next time you get the forty, and then now yeah. the the one twenty. Yeah. It's like, and yeah. then it just gets out of control real fast. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that happens with anything, right? Rage, armor, anything will just get out of control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'd have to like code in very special use case to not allow that to stack. I think it would be still be a powerful unit at that point, but it's just kind of broken as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's do Inferno and Vent together. I know they're not exactly the same, but I think that they kind of similar yeah. ideas, yeah. similar um, effects. Uh, oh. Inferno, I would put in yellow. I think it, um, it has particular builds where it's quite good. I find that with Hellhorned in particular. It's actually less valuable. I think it would be better in some other. I think it'd be, for example, if this was like a Stygian card, I actually think it would be better. Right. I think in Hellhorn, when um, how to say it, Hellhorn's one of the few clans where I almost consistently have multiple floors. Yeah. Like I usually, especially with Shardtail Queen, I almost always have at least two floors with Shardtail Queen, because I have a floor with Shardtail Queen and Imps, and then I have a floor with whatever else is my other wing condition. And then Inferno becomes really awkward because there's one floor I can play it on, and oftentimes that floor doesn't have anything because I've already killed it with my Imps and units. Um, I think it was a little bit better pre DLC. It's also kind of better post DLC because minus two is really good with it. But I just right. I the scenarios when I need the clear, and the fact that it doesn't actually clear as well as it used to because most things have more than a hundred health now. I don't know. Yeah, I, f I find it interesting that you rank it kind of lower because I actually agree with you. But I think a lot of people are going to disagree with us. <laughs> but for everything you just said, I agree. It's like I feel like. It doesn't really clear necessarily a lot of the late game. Uh, it will hurt it enough. It's a good, it's weird. It's a good card. It's another one where it's like, it is a good card. I just don't find I need it. Um, it either is un, a little unplayable if I'm doing a two floor setup. Even if I have a one floor setup, I'm often adding it to my deck thinking, okay, this is going to be good. And then I never play it. Um, it's just like, I didn't need this card. Uh, was there but yeah right so like yeah i kind of agree uh but i th i know a lot of people really love inferno they're gonna they're gonna have some fighting words with us <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's good um in i guess melting is sort of um if, i think it, i mean it's uh, best but, in stygian yeah. because then you can spell weakness like that's it like the spell yeah, weakness combo yeah, no, also a spell weakness. if it had if it had a tune I actually think it would be good. Because then you could pretty reliably get it to a 200 damage. Or even like, you know, 250 damage, right? Like, I think giving it a tune would be the way to go. Without right. it, I think it's really a struggle. It, it's tough, though, because it, it could be pretty broken at that point. Because then it's just like you're, you're deleting every floor. Um, yeah. Which, to be I, fair, you do that with three Ember already, but <laughs> I was gonna say for but for yeah, three for Ember, because yeah. you'd have to get you'd have to get plus thirty and you have to get minus two to make it a one cost, and it kills everything, but it's not gonna kill Divinity. Like you'd have to get a lot of them to kill Divinity. I guess that now that's true because then if you get spell weakness, then it gets kind of insane. I guess I see that. Yeah, you really can't put a tune on it because it would get out of hand too quickly. It but just, yeah, it's like I, I feel like it does what it does and it does it perfect. Um, it's like the card itself is good. I just I don't know, don't similar to Impolate, simple like Impolate is a great card, but I don't need it. Like, yeah. 
my almost every Hellhorn build I have by the point in the game I would want Inferno, I just don't need it. I think it, it, I think it comes down to the way everyone has like their preferences for how they build a deck, right? I could see Inferno being more useful for people that don't focus as much on rage. Um, then it's like, okay, I need this damage, right? And also or, backline removal. Yeah, right. My my biggest thing with Inferno though is it doesn't help with Relentless at all, and that's. That's hard. It's hard to go into runs like if you don't have the scaling to kill the units ahead, I don't know that you can beat Seraph. And I think then it's like, well, that's not necessarily true. You could just maybe that's the problem is that we are so offensive in our right. design and the way that we design our decks. Right. It's all about the damage scaling. Yeah. But you could go heavy defense, slow scaling, and then take something like Inferno as a stopgap save your prior health yeah i, th I think you... we are just more uh like we want the points we want the flying kills um, <laughs> right. so that like we need the uh, well, quick scaling <laughs> to, to... so i th i had a i had a a similar thing like with aggressive edible right like aggressive edible is in a lot of ways it does the same thing as what inferno does but it puts it onto a unit it's it's a way to compensate for slow scaling ah i really want to okay now i'm actually curious i think you could i think there's a there's a way to do this like think like alpha fiend one of the biggest problems with alpha fiend is the slow scaling like you could maybe make alpha fiend work better if you did inferno as right. uh as a way to just kind of like set up right Spikes could be more reliable. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna play around with it more. I think it's still not great. I think it still is pretty niche, but it could maybe get like light orange if with enough um play. Yeah, that is good. Right. <laughs> it, it's it's similar to battering ram in a way to me. It's like I know that other players can crush consistently with the card, but that's just because that's the way they construct their decks. The way I construct my deck, I just, I don't need it. Uh, or I, not that I don't need it, I just, I, it doesn't work well in my deck. It doesn't work with our design, with the way that we deck build. I think right. that's the problem, is it's how we deck build. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, let's put it at the back of this is good in my deck, because I think that this is a me problem and a you problem, <laughs> not a card car problem. Yeah, because it's like, I, I can, I've seen, you know, like Rising Dusk, for example, I know, is uses inferno a lot and he's very the way he looks at the game is like he wants just enough like he's very specific in what he wants mm -hmm. right like just enough to get uh like he won't usually do the insane rage scaling that, that we might typically do right mm -hmm. <laughs> and in that type of scenario inferno becomes super top tier i think vent is really good i think it's one of the best aoe spells in the game yep um I hate I, the design of it, but I love this card. <laughs> the only thing I, next cost. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But I, I think it, this is this is the thing with a lot of the X cost cards these days. It's what an X cost card is 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 a way to dump shard damage onto a card that's zero cost. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like he, he, say you get fifty <laughs> ember. And pour into vent, you do a hundred damage, yay! <laughs> like, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. So it, and the only problem I have is that it dumps your ember, which is anti synergistic with one of the best hellhorned artifacts, which is um, the horn, yeah. the unbroken horn. Yeah. Um, so that part is a little irritating at right. the same time, like being able to just play all your stuff and then, oh, zero cost kill backliners is right. like really, really, really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this with the piercing is pretty clutch. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's because uh, like I think it's one, I guess it's the one that it's uh, the, Beside uh, Inferno, the one AOE card in Hellhorn. And uh, unlike 
Stygian, which has uh, a lot of AoE uh, spells. This is common, you get it really early. Um, you can just, uh, it can kill ring 1 and ring 2, uh, like without any upgrades. You just need one one mana and then it kills. And then, yeah, like, and then in, in the late game, you just need to uh, upgrade it with, uh, even with like the plus 20 and consume, uh, just play it once. It, it, it'll help you, uh, if you can't kill like some backlines, if you don't draw very well. Where Vent is also not great is, and this is true of all AoE cards, is has super anti-synergy with sweep and super anti-synergy, especially with slay. Slay and strike. Yeah. Um, so, love it. <laughs> no, and and even anything with uh, any sweeper with your strike uh, essences, yeah, yeah, alpha fiend essences is not going to be happy about it. Um, so it has a, a little bit of anti synergy, um, but at the same time, you don't always play those builds. And when you're not playing those builds, I find it to be quite good. I think it's a better early game card. Yeah, uh, I think it falls off the divinity because to make it work with divinity, it needs to have piercing. It needs to have piercing, and it needs and to have at least extra damage. Yeah. yeah, and so then you're talking about even then, like a twenty damage piercing is not enough to kill every backliner. Right. Some of them right. have thirty health, so it's um, it's good. I uh, I like it early game. I think it's less good the later the game goes, but. But like, it, yeah, it, there is an option to put plus thirty and plus ten piercing on this card. Then it's, it's then it's pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, but um, uh, yeah, there's some, sometimes you do get that those options. So it's uh, I would it's put fun. it at the front of the front of uh, orange, light orange. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's well. Is it better? Is it actually better than uh, Hornbreak? I think it's similar to Hornbreak for me. Yeah, uh, Hornbreak you can use on your own units, and Vent right, you can't. Right. Flexi and I would put Hornbreak ahead of it, just because of the flexibility of the Hornbreak. I could agree with that, yeah. Okay. And, and Hornbreak's more relevant late game, I feel. Mm -hmm. Can you still kill, you know, those 30 damage Shade Wings, and st or 30 health Shade Wings, and 30 damage. I mean, they do like 90 damage or something. So it's a bit of damage. Let's do uh, both double cards together next. Yep. Uh, put it up here for now. Last stand similar uh, to a lot of cards where I think it gained a lot in the DLC, both in the just the ability to play it, uh, but also the fact that offense is so much more important. Uh, the like crazy offense is just good. Before it was like it just seemed to win more. Like when would I ever need to double my rage to win a game? Uh, it was like if you have enough rage that this is good it, you probably had enough rage already but now it's like I can actually make this be relevant and I, I make it relevant pretty often like yeah. particularly with Wormkin it's insane I mean yeah yeah. I mean I was going to say there's a lot more ways to get consume cards back these days and right. this is a this is a card you don't want to play once this is a card you want to play three or four times typically right, right. Uh, or if you want to play it the one time it's in a it's as a finisher so you stack up, you put permafrost on it, you stack up, and then you play it as a finisher to just make sure you're you're good at clearing units. I, right. I, so I I also agree. I think it's a lot better than it was. Um. Yeah. Yeah, and also like the uh sometimes uh you it it, it acts as a um uh, a way to uh scale up your damage instantly like to just buff up your uh, your damage by a lot uh sometimes like you have you may have like the there may be the the, the nameless siren uh that you you're encanting it's gaining a rage but you're not really uh it's not a lot of rage and then you're not really killing the you're not you're not really killing the front lines and then if you have doubling all your the rage of your, all your units, then uh, now it can actually kill the front lines, and then, uh, and then you can actually get to the backline units and all that stuff. So it's a, uh, 
it it acts as like that jump in damage. Interesting too is that uh, you could in in Echo Right builds where you have repeater, um, you only need a fledgling imp. It doesn't have to be endless, and you can still scale enough to kill divinity and all the units in divinity. Um, because by let's see, if you if you have intrinsic and um, and a fledgling imp, and you get your fledgling imp relatively early, or maybe you have intrinsic on I don't know another spell or something like that, ten or uh, five rage, doubled across three turns, you're already at forty rage. So it, yeah, yeah. rage it, serum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think the fact that like it has so many applications now that it didn't have before. Um, makes it a lot better than it was before. Yeah, I would never consume or move on it, though. I don't think. I think you always want it with consume because there's so many ways to bring it back. I guess you could go minus two consume removal, but I, I've never done that personally. I, I've done it. It's actually pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it, uh, it's not as good as the consume return, but it's it's pretty solid. I mean, if you're not playing with a, a wormkin or doesn't have the impish scholar. Then, uh, like having consumed removal and minus two, and sometimes you get the third upgrade, and you get another minus two, or, or even minus one to for it to cost one uh, mm -hmm. to be one cost. Then, it's uh, actually like still pretty good. Um, yeah, feels a similar power level to like Apex and the Range Brute and Important Work to me. Like it's like if it makes sense in your deck, GG. it's super good, and yeah. it's and it's rare, so you're only gonna take right. it if it fits. Right, exactly. Um, on the other hand, we have a super <laughs> niche card. Yeah. Um, reinforce, reinforce, and it's really good with Apex Imp, and it's really mediocre with everything else. Yeah. Yeah, if I have to add this to my deck, um, I'm in a rough spot. Now, as a card, it is technically good. It can have a lot of value, but it's similar to like what we've kind of, the, the running theme is like defense just doesn't hold a candle to offense. Um, you're better off just dazing units, sapping them, or killing them. <laughs> Stacking your own armor. This is a card that can put it into hyper mode, but still, it's only one unit. It's consume. It's three cost. It's a lot to ask for. Um, you have to get the armor up first, and then it, it's just tough to pull off. It's not unworkable. Like it, it has its uses, mm -hmm. but it feels very yellow tier to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. That's it. <laughs> um. Let's do. I guess we can just do the remaining spells together. They're not really that go to go together, but oh, I guess we'll do the, let's do the rage, the double rages, so we can do. We um, can do all the, the bad rage cards, all the ritual rage. of battle, and yeah, those ones together. Um, I actually surprisingly don't hate. Uh, what is it called? I can't even see it. Rage Serum? Yeah, Rage Serum. I hated it. I don't <laughs> hate it. It's still not great, I don't think. But it's not terrible. It, it's technically great value. Uh, this just comes back down to the opportunity cost. Um, mm -hmm. but, but Zero Ember for three Rage is an incredible return. Um, it's just it's competing with one Ember for five Rage on every unit. And that's the right. problem. Right. I've actually found decent success with uh, Echo Right Return Repeater. It's not like super high ceiling, but a free three rage and etch a turn. Uh, and in some cases, an inspire if it's in, if it's like purple or whatever, mm -hmm. but not too bad. Not too bad. It's a free thing. So it's like value wise, it is good. It's just like I often want to draw something higher impact. Like, yeah, I almost, <laughs> I almost never take it, take it. I almost like right. if I start with it, I might not hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's not a high priority removal from my deck. Yeah. Like it's it's decent, just little tick of offense for no ember cost, and it consumes itself. So 
it's not like you're continuing to see it throughout the fight. Um, but yeah, do I add it to a deck? Rarely. <laughs> yeah, and uh, also the uh, a lot of times you do get this card in the cavern event that uh, kind of don't uh, yeah. forget what's it called, but like it, that cavern event. You get a consume. It's a cavern event where you get to pick a consume card. Oh uh, yeah. That has yeah. become one of my least favorite cavern events in the DLC. <laughs> mm -hmm. So It'd be nice okay. if I could get an info box, but I usually, put it at like yellow. Yeah, maybe the yeah. Seems very similar to Inflame. It's like mm -hmm. it's a way to get rage, it's not a good way to get rage. Ritual of battle. Good way to get rage. Now that is a good way to get yeah. rage. <laughs> I think it's oh. Probably yeah. up there with the best cards to put minus two on in the game. Yep, absolutely. It it is hands down the one I put two ember stones into the most. Mm -hmm. Um it's not even close. It's just it's, it's nice to have that one hundred ten that you know it costs hundred ten gold to reroll and spend two ember stones. So it's nice to have that knowledge that you go into any merchant of magic with hundred ten gold and boom you have a top tier card. Yeah, at three ember, it's unexciting. But uh, and I think similar to like what you said, Nate, with uh, inflame being better at zero, I like this better at one and no double stack than three and double stack. Like I, I don't like to reduce one ember and then bring it back to three at double stack. I think at one yep. ember, it's a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I, I saw your uh, video on it, uh, Gabriel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but it, and uh, it's also good, like with minus two and uh, double stack. Yeah. So have it two two cost uh, twenty rage. It's uh, yeah, it's valuable there. Yeah, pretty good. Forty and, damage, not it, too bad. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's really it's good. just um. Just a really, per, really good card. Um, it doesn't. Yeah. You don't really. Uh, you don't really need the extra pip space for to play it, unlike the flashing yum. But then there, uh, but then with the flashing yum, you can. Uh, you, it, there's more advantages uh, for the flashing yum. Right. Um, right. And the ceilings higher with fledgling. Yeah. I think the thing with Ritual that makes it, um, in particular, very strong right now is that the advent of sweep being so strong. So anytime you have any kind of sweep, it's really, really good. Um, your multi-strike units want heavy burst damage as quickly as possible. The other thing is that Rage um, falls off like eventually, like over time. But when you start with ten, like assuming there's no cleanse or whatever, right? You're you're like ten turns of like getting your rage back and that's often a big problem with rage especially during relentless combats is it falls off like it goes away but it the more you have the better it gets right so right. um it's i mean you can get higher you can you can you can get higher rage in a single card play um but not without like a really bizarre deck so um yeah for that and this is the this is the thing that I think the the DLC also did is the minus two stone just enabled a lot of stuff to become right. so much easier. Right. It's really I mean the the optimal at least in my opinion optimal is you get minus two, you get minus one, and then you get a times five camera event where you don't have to <laughs> eat the shards. You just get yeah. a whole bunch of these, and it's it's gravy train. Yeah. Yeah. This is I one think of it's the best times five cards. I feel. Just in general, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, that's the it. It warps your as a starting card. It warps your early choices. It's like you may not even go early unit upgrade. You might just go for spells so you can get this low enough that maybe you hit that cavern event. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you can hell vent it earlier and mm -hmm. whatnot. Yeah. Um. So I I keep it in where it is. I think it's. The right spot i wouldn't put it higher than that sure. necessarily yeah yeah it's like uh, it, it's a step lower than last stand well kind of i don't know it's like it's equal like, to last stand I it's think. equal yeah, yeah maybe equal very similar to like hidden passage in that just a very solid common that you can build around spike of the hellhorn's pretty trash yeah yeah it's a 
one of the worst X Hussars. <laughs> it's yeah. It, yeah, least... I, might, I might think it is. I think it is now the worst of the X cost cards. The only thing I'll give it is at least as an X cost, it has opportunity to do good things as an X cost, but it's so rare that it actually does that. <laughs> like I think you fact, need uh, minimum five Ember before it's right. like actually worth. Yeah, you need like it's okay with like the plus three per X, whatever it's called, last page yeah. or yeah, yeah, for whatever it's called, like oh, uh, first help act. First health pack, yeah. And even then, though, like, it's kind of an, inf it's like a zero cost in flame at that point. It's okay. And it yeah. consumes. <laughs> you can add things to it, but that double stack and whatnot. It, I don't take it much. I'm in a weird spot if I have to take it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, just difficult to, uh, difficult to play. And, uh, even if you have first help act, it, there are just so many more, much better Xbox cars, uh, especially for the event, for that uh, spike event that you get to choose um, which spike you get. And why why would you choose spark. this? Uh, <laughs> why would you choose a Hellhorn spike when right. the like Awoken spike is so much better? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. The irony is that the the one time it's actually really, really good is the one time you'll never need it, which is in transcendent builds because you can build up insane amounts of ember, yep. and you don't need it yep. <laughs> because <laughs> because you also have been building up crazy amounts of other buffs. So, right. um, yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward card. I could see uh, green tier for it. Yeah, yeah, that's where I would put it. Yeah. Like maybe it also, it, like in, in some niche cases, like the um there is the wormkin, the the one that gives you amber, the the card that gives you gives you amber. Um, and then there's also mm. the umbra, doubles your amber, maybe. I but, think I but... I I did have a run like that once, which was good, but it's pretty. I, I like double basically two point or three points into repeater, so you get two back a turn, and then you get ember and the spike back. It's okay at that point. Not even as insane as you think it would be, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good. But it's yeah, it's very niche. <laughs> um, maybe let's do the uh, two last units together. Then we can do the last two spells. So we have Steelworker, Rail Beater. Um, I mean, already I think they both. Are sitting where they belong. They're both really good. They went from two of the worst units in the game to two of the better units of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, like <laughs> still worker. Um, actually, like uh, it applies five armor to all friendly units. I think it used to be just to itself. It's, oh. Right. Yeah, yep, and horrible. and then <laughs> now it's like now there's, but now that like the its uh, essence is also really good, uh, mm -hmm. the, so and then you can uh, just stack up the, the the units, uh, stack two of the same units with the steelworker essence, and then you get more, you get just ten armor, and then <laughs> and then you just uh, it stacks on itself, and, and it for, is yeah. Rail hammer makes it insane too. It yeah, is the uh, it has become the. Um, I, I said there was only one. This is the second divinity counter. This mm. is this is top yep. floor divinity. Yep. This is how you play top floor divinity. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. You can directly calculate how much of it you need to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I I could see them nerfing the essence at least. Yeah. Um, give it more of a reason to be a unit though i will say lately i've been using it as a unit and it's still pretty insane just as a mm -hmm. unit <laughs> um and self-infused it's 10 armor to the floor and it, if you have a rail hammer it's like what nine eight? nine nine yeah it's plus four and right. nine, the other nine, thing nine, it's nine. it's a demon so gurg's yep. goad is always a thing yep yeah I've turned into that's a carry. true <laughs> yeah um, yeah, it's super good. And then the next would be Railbeater. Yeah. Uh, Railbeater also, also really good. 
Yeah. Turns out that uh, doubling your damage, good pretty thing. good. <laughs> um, good. Good stats too defensively. Oops. So it's like you can there fit it. it. Uh, you can basically just copy the unit a bunch and have it be both a front and back liner. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't matter what order you draw them in. And yeah, I mean, like versatile. the the change to this spell uh, melee weakness is just so much better and. Yeah. Uh, from before the pushback, but um, this it's just you, you just you play it, you, uh, like Gers Gold, it's really good on it. Um, and then you 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 have this as the front line, and then you have a back line uh, that does a lot of damage, or even you can just buff this guy with a lot of rage as well, and the, or you can infuse it with like some. Um, some scaling, scaling essence, and then it just continues to deal double the damage. Uh, sometimes it's important like... to note as well. Uh, really, really good in combination with trample. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's a very rare thing, but uh, trample does roll over the melee weakness extra damage. Sometimes it's relevant, not always, but sometimes. Yeah, you're like. Uh, pseudo serves the patient. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it's as good as Steelworker. I think it's on par with like the imps is where I would put it personally. So that like kind of middle, like I would put it at the front of that. I don't know if you feel differently. I'd say kind of the same as like Horned Warrior. I think it's just good. Yeah, I might even bump. I would put it there, but also... I feel like I would bump Horned right next to it and mm -hmm. Welder Helper. I feel like I feel like Horned Warrior and Railbeater are pretty similar to me. Yeah. Inter they're just kind of always takeable. And you can build them into just a lot of good things uh in almost every run. Yeah. Okay, okay. so we have two left. Uh March of Shields. March for me is pretty niche just because I only want it in an overstack build typically mm -hmm. and only if I can't uh, control which unit is in front, which honestly, most of the time I can. But if I need it, it's a godsend. Like it's like you're praying that you get that card and it just saves your run. It has some flexibility, like you can use it on enemies to displace them, but similar to like a really grass. Big thing. Right, it's not a huge aspect of it. And I don't think the 10 armor is okay. Um, I think it's, if you're just adding it for defense, I think it's a, a low value add. On it does, it does allow some interesting things you can do against Surf the Patient because you can manipulate who gets melee weakness and then who gets hit right. at certain times. Right. So there's some like utility there. Um, yeah, be, before the, uh, the cavern event that uh, build a card cavern event. This is the only card that uh, allows you to move a unit to the front. Uh, that also gives you armor. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that doesn't do it's... damage to you. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, like sometimes uh, you want. To move your units, maybe like it's good. It's good in sketches of salvation builds. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can shuffle your units. Around. Yeah. So so you can uh, and also like to also like a standard uh, champion and then put your champion in the front in the case oh, of right. the sentient. Right. Um, it's really really good with apex imp builds. It's twenty mm, damage to yeah. apex imp. Right. Yeah. Um. I think it's objectively better than Fortify. Yeah. You've spent 25, coin, 25 coins, gold, and it's instantly just better. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, just yeah. highlighting again the inconsistency with how currently some of the cards are. But yeah, I, I would say it's like orange, mid-tier orange for me. Less than, I think it's not as good as, maybe put it behind Inferno. I, th I I feel like it's on uh, on par with branding right though. Like it, these three armor cards, they're very similar to yeah. each other. 
Yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah. And last, but not least, but not best, <laughs> not, one horn's yeah. tome. <laughs> this one's tough to evaluate. It's like yeah. it should be three costs. That's the that's the biggest thing. I'm totally fine with it being fragile. I think yeah. if there's ever a clan that can handle fragile, it's, it's Hellhorn. Right. But I don't think it should be five costs. Okay, this it's getting a bit long, but <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's fine. I would I would put it either at the front of yellow or the back of the the yellow. I put it in front of yellow. Yeah, it it seems I I seem to pick it similar to the rate of Inferno March of Shields alloy, so it's kind of around that area. But it is pretty niche. It's like if you you'll know if you can handle fragile or not, and also you'll know if you can handle the ember or not. It's not a card that you can just always take. Uh, because yeah, if it was uncommon, it'd parts. be much worse. Right, right. It's it's that so, sometimes you you can uh, handle the fragile, but you don't have the ember to play it. Um, right, and right. then it's uh, and then you can't really pick it up. But then other times you have the ember to play it, but then you just can't Why really deal that? with the fragile. So and, and granted, there is value stone and and double ember upgrade that you can put into it but that is that is the baseline to get it playable whereas like with other mm -hmm. cards it's making it like super playable versus yeah. like hard to play this is like just making it able to play but you have to spend everything because typically i and, and and you know this could be another one that comes down to deck building strategy because like for me i rarely take an ember upgrade for uh, yeah. my boss upgrade or whatever like i'm almost always taking draw or pip um, so for me, it is awkward to play it often uh, for the Ember cost. But I think if, you, if you're somebody that constructs decks that typically just have a lot of Ember, maybe it's more takeable. Yeah, and also, five, like, five ridiculous. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, that the, like if you're upgrading this with minus two costs, you're not upgrading other cards with minus two costs. So there's the, the, uh, oh, a came back to the opportunity cost again but like i think i think as the the general rule when picking cards it's like you should uh considering the good the strength of the card is good but also the opportunity cost of you drawing uh the cards or like using the upgrades on this card versus the other cards it's uh, it's more valuable because uh, because the the you want the a a good deck and then uh, this is what also why like the thinner decks are much usually just much better than uh fatter decks the fat fatter decks it is the single best card to put with a one repeater to still um echo right especially if you have uh first of kin then you just win. That's a that's a that's an automatic win, but that's a very very specific combo. Um, no, I think this looks pretty good. I think this is right. It emphasizes the fact that like in Hellhorned, imp builds are still very supreme. Rage builds as well. Overstacking, so it's rage overstacking, and armor is just not as good as rage right now. Um, and there's just the the ways that you would dump your ember are just not great. There's not like most of the stuff that you need to win in Hellhorn is low cost, which is interesting. I think it just it highlights the need to I think re rework a little bit the clan. Like if you get a high cost ember a high ember cost thing, you should be getting a lot of value out of it, and a lot of them just don't provide the value that you that you want regardless of ember cost it's like if you compare like spike of the hellhorn to ritual like how much x cost do you have to pour in to get <laughs> just the baseline yeah. there like mm -hmm. or even like fledging imp or something yeah but i do think the clan is very powerful for, for me they're my best clan um it's like i don't think it's like the clan is weak or anything i just kind of agree with you though that like there is 
oddness with the themes. Um, it's a flavor. It's a flavor issue for me. Right. Right. And I think they may just because they built this uh, clan first, and then they just have it had just has a lot of cards that carry got carried over, and then just weren't really dealt with. Unlike something like the Melting Remnant, uh, which has a really clear uh, clan Couple identity. Melting Remnant or Umbra, really, to that matter. Yeah, I mean, everything, everything, I mean, even Awoken, you can see improvements in terms of identity. Um, but then once you get into like Stygian, Umbra, Melting Remnant, Wormkin, Worm you yeah. get like very clear identities around mm -hmm. how they operate. Yeah. And Hellhorn sits in this space where it's like, it's got its things. I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel as flavorful. Apart from Imp decks just being insanely good, like yeah, Imps right. with Imps is good, but and also like I, I guess it's because uh, it's a beginner uh, clan. Uh, yeah. Cards need to be simple to play. Uh, mechanics shouldn't be that difficult to understand, and uh, like especially the rage, it's very straightforward. Armor, uh, you see a lot of armor in other deck building games, so. Rage it's as well. You see rage, rage in other clans. Yeah, it's yeah, so it's it, it. I think it also suffers from the from data aspect. Like it needs to be simple, but maybe like in, still it needs some uh, identity. Also has the most tr beginner trap cards in the game. <laughs> yeah, so, I've got to go. This okay. has been really good. Yeah. Appreciate you guys taking the time and kind of organizing this as well. Um, I don't know why I'm switching off of that, sorry, for people I'm watching on Twitch and YouTube. We're going to come back at another time and do more, certainly other clans, also some other ideas about uh, tier lists. And I'm going to sign off. So thanks, you guys. Talk to you guys later. Yeah, thanks, yeah thank you. Fun. Thanks, Night Angel. Bye. Bye. Bye.